The weather is about to get very crazy across the United States over the next few days as a large storm will be impacting areas in the northern and central plains, back into the Midwest, and eventually through the Ohio Valley where all modes of severe weather will be possible, including damaging winds, large to very large hail, and a few tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the severe weather threat here across parts of the United States over the next few days, what the greatest threats will be, and where the greatest threat is going to also also be. We're going to begin with what's happening across the United States right now, which by the looks of it, it's very quiet right now. You'll notice that there is not much cloud cover across anywhere east of the Rocky Mountains. And the main reason why is because we have this death ridge that's basically built across the southern plains. And this is basically trapping in a lot of the warm air and dry air for the Midwest Ohio Valley and back through the southern plains. But we do have a low pressure system that is spinning back over in the Pacific Northwest. And what this is going to do is bring our next chance for a multi-day severe weather event which begins today and will run all the way probably at least through Tuesday if not even Wednesday of this upcoming week where all modes of severe weather are going to be possible. Now we've already seen some storm activity develop out of this. Last night back over in northeast Montana there were some damaging winds and hail. Relatively rural areas and most of it was actually in Canada but as we go later into today eventually tomorrow and even as we go into Tuesday into Wednesday that threat of severe weather is actually going to be impacting more of the United States. Well, let's talk more about that severe weather potential for the next few days and we'll begin with today which is Sunday we do have a slight risk of severe weather across parts of Minnesota North and South Dakota and we also have a large marginal threat across the Rocky Mountains and the high plains where hail and wind will be possible we do have a low tornado risk across areas like Minnesota and as well as North and South Dakota today it's a relatively conditional threat not really super certain that we're going to see storm development today we also have a marginal threat back down in Michigan and Ohio predominantly just for the wind concern in those areas and maybe some isolated hail and we also do have a low tornado risk again across minnesota north and south dakota where again maybe an isolated tornado or two will be possible now monday is a little bit more concerning especially for those in south dakota and minnesota and there's many reasons for that the first of which is that we are going to have a very favorable setup for any discrete supercells that fire off there is going to be a more favorable environment especially in southeast south dakota for tornadoes and so it's a low it's not really a really high threat by any means but this area in particular I do think will at least have one or two tornadoes if storms do stay discreet there and if they do fire off which are two contingencies but it's likely we are going to see storms there now if those don't fire up for any reason we are at least still dealing with a pretty numerous threat for damaging winds and hail in some cases we even could see some very large hail exceeding tennis ball sized hail across central and southern Minnesota back into South Dakota and that slight risk goes into northwest Wisconsin and the marginal threat stays in place across Montana back into parts of Wisconsin. As we go into Tuesday, this threat will shift into parts of the Midwest. We're going to have a more detailed breakdown on that in our next forecast, but we will talk a little bit about this in today's forecast because I do think Tuesday could also be a big day across parts of the Midwest and even the Northern Ohio Valley. Also, two marginal threats. We have one up in New England and we have another one back over in parts of the Maryland area in Southwest Pennsylvania where some wind and hail will be possible. Notice this enhanced risk is driven by both damaging winds and large to very large hail. That hatched area there represents the potential for hail that exceeds two inches in diameter for tomorrow. Our tornado risk right now is the greatest in parts of Southeast South Dakota, Southwest Minnesota, and extreme Northwestern Iowa. I don't think we're going to see a 10% tornado risk tomorrow. No matter what, though, I do think that there's an elevated chance for tornadoes, especially in that brown shaded area. Now, the tornado risk for today and tomorrow is going to be mostly in the northern and parts of the central plains. This is what we're looking at for today. Tornado parameter values overall pretty low. It's a relatively conditional risk today for severe weather in general, and also that tornado risk does appear very low today, but it's definitely not zero if storms are able to fire up. I think the greatest chance will be around and just after sunset across mainly northwestern Minnesota, so a lot of the woods there. And then as we go later into the evening, into the overnight hours, that tornado threat dies down. Tomorrow, in my opinion, is way more interesting. I think that we're going to have a better shot for tornadoes, especially in southwest Minnesota and as well as eastern South Dakota. The tornado parameter values are definitely elevated here where those reds and oranges are showing. In addition to that, we have curved hodographs, which means that there's a lot of spin in the atmosphere. So any supercells that can stay discreet will have an elevated chance at a tornado threat for tomorrow. Now let's talk more about the timing for severe weather. Beginning with this morning, storms are moving throughout Canada. Those are the ones 
ones that were in northeast Montana last night. As we go into the mid to late afternoon, we're going to be watching for a few storms to fire up, mainly in South Dakota, right around about 5 to 6 o'clock. They'll blow up a little bit more in coverage, more than likely by about 7 to 8 o'clock. But again, just notice the coverage is not really that impressive. They're going to be very isolated today. So overall, the main concern with any storms that develop will be wind and hail. Wouldn't even be surprised if we had something in western South Dakota. But again, it's going to be very isolated. We'll have some more storms develop in northwest northwest Minnesota late tonight into the overnight hours. But overall, it does look to be more capped off environment, meaning that we are probably not going to see much storm development. But if storms do fire, we could see an isolated brief tornado, hail and wind. Once we go into tomorrow morning, storms are going to be relatively kind of dying out back over in northeast Minnesota. Over here in South Dakota, we'll have some elevated showers and storms in the morning. By the afternoon, things do not look too crazy by about three o'clock. We have one or two storms maybe in South Dakota. And by the way, these ones will not really be the ones that we're talking about for a tornado risk. These will be more driven for wind and hail. They should be more elevated. But by the time we get closer to three, four, five o'clock, storms are going to try to fire off here in eastern South Dakota and in southwestern Minnesota. And any storms that can stay discreet will have a much better shot at producing a tornado threat. But large to very large hail and damaging winds still remains the main concern. By six to seven o'clock, this will all start to kind of merge into a line of storms. So this will be a relatively short-lived discrete supercell threat. I think just after or just around sunset, these storms all merge into a line. And then this will eventually become mostly a wind and hail threat as this moves towards areas like Minneapolis and as well as western Wisconsin. Now, beyond today and tomorrow, as we go into Tuesday, we're going to be watching for yet again another risk for severe weather. This one is going to be in the Midwest. Now, I do want to point out this is the NAM model. One thing to note is that it shows much higher tornado parameter values in southeast South Dakota on Monday, which is tomorrow. As we go into Tuesday, it does not really show nearly as much. And this is usually a bullish type of model where it usually does indicate a higher risk than it actually turns out to be. So overall, it's just a little bit of an overhyper, I would say, if you want to call it that. So overall, back over in Michigan and even in eastern Wisconsin, these values honestly are kind of on the lower spectrum for a tornado risk on, on Tuesday. And then eventually as we go into Wednesday, I think the tornado risk is kind of dying out then. So here's what we're looking at on the European model for the timing because we don't have any you know short-term models that go that far out yet. This is what we're looking at for Tuesday morning. That line of storms moves across Wisconsin. that will eventually move through Michigan during the morning hours as long as all those storms do fire up here in that area tomorrow. And then as we go into the afternoon, we should see some more storms fire off, but overall it is kind of contingent on that first line of storms not stabilizing the atmosphere too much. If it's able to become unstable again, we'll see another round of storms fire off. I do think Tuesday will be more of a wind and hail threat comparatively to a tornado risk. Once we go into Wednesday morning, the storm activity fizzles out. We should have another round of storms probably over near the Great Lakes or even in Ohio. And then after that, I think we're kind of done with the severe weather threat at least being somewhat, you know, numerous to widespread. It should be a bit more isolated after that. Once we go into Thursday into Friday, we could see another round of severe storms back over here in the Midwest, but it, it does not look very impressive as of right now for Thursday, but it is going to be a day to watch for. So here's what we're looking at beyond Wednesday and Thursday. Another trough is going to enter into the very far northern United States or in southern Canada. This is not going to be ejecting over the Rocky Mountains, so not nearly as much mixing, and that's going to kind of lead to, I think, a bit more of a uh, kind of, you know, not nearly as intense severe weather setup, if you will, for Thursday. But I do think severe weather will be possible again on Thursday and Friday in the Midwest and then eventually the Ohio Valley. And then by the time we go into the weekend, storms moving through New England, and then we're going to be drying out again as we go into early September with no signs right now of any hurricanes or even tropical storms in the Atlantic Ocean. That might change as we go into September, but for right now, it is very quiet, which is very surprising for this time of the year. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like button down below. Subscribe if you've not already.